Do you ever have like really deep thoughts on the toilet? Yeah. Like just sit around and think. <laughs> now I need to start. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, like seriously, I always get, I always get like my best probably mental energy in the morning, you know? Yes. And like after I have that first cup of morning coffee is just when just you just when like my my brain is at its best you know and but it's also when I need to go to the bathroom you know sometimes it takes a minute and so I'll be there on the toilet with nothing to do and just like have profound thoughts about my life yeah like what well so like the other day I was I was thinking about fear because that's been a big thing for me lately that God's like kind of been teaching me about my fear, you know, the way that it affects my life, and especially fear of, like, uh, failure, you know, fear of kind of messing things up or seeing myself as a failure, you know? That's pretty weird because nobody thinks about... No, I mean, nobody, like, sees themselves as a failure. I'm probably like, the only person. Um, You're not a failure. Let me give you that silver lining. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. But just, like... A little that I do know about you. I was realizing that it's you know, that it's kind of a contagious thing, you know, that if you see yourself as a failure, then the people that you're closest with, it makes it a lot harder for them to succeed, you know, because like as you hold yourself to this impossibly high standard, it's contagious. Fear is just as much as contagious as negativity is just as much contagious as positivity, right? Right, because you're you're judging yourself by this impossibly high standard. And then you start judging the other people around you by this standard, you know? And so suddenly fear turns into judgment, it turns into criticism and just all around having a bad attitude, you know, about your life and people around you. And then they get messed up by it too. I get that way get often. It. Very often that I, this is my testimony episodes set I always forget seven episode seven it's kind of catching up to me because I've gotten now like this is I'm like on like a short leash at this point because I just filmed the other one last Sunday mm -hmm. so like I'm behind because usually you want to be able to like um you know film this and then like I don't need to have it published till like three weeks out right to give okay. yourself plenty of time to edit yeah to cut it out or in case like somebody can't make it to sit down like right. happened on saturday right but it's okay because he's rescheduled and then i met you in a bar um which is really weird yeah where i was like hey let's have a conversation um and now we're here in this shady basement in a trailer house okay it's a duplex <laughs> <laughs> don't be downplaying the duplex <laughs> But, but, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is super shady. Right across the street from a, 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 a um, tow lot. And, and a shooting range. And a shooting range. But relax, the Mid-Continent Library is also across the street from the shooting range. And just on the other side of that is the uh, police station. So, like... So we're safe here. Yeah. 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 Cool. So... That's a good thing. Where was I going with that? Oh, yeah. My Testimony 6. Thank you for listening. If you're listening, thank you. If you're uh, watching, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. I haven't said that in any of those. I think it's just kind of weird, but... I mean, it's that pitch that everybody else makes. You gotta do it, too. Exactly. And because being a follower of the Christ and walking in the Holy Spirit is also about... means being a good YouTuber. Exactly. And it means just doing what everybody else is doing, basically. Yes. Yes. Well, not really. I see what you did there. That's normally my job. Usually I do that with people, like say things and like see if they call me on it. Are you going to call me on it or are you just going <laughs> to nod your head and be like, you're totally wrong about just doing things like what... Well, you do have to, uh, you know, to an extent, like, you, there's there's skills, or not skills, but there's, like, crafts that, that you kind of have to, like, like music, right? Well, yeah, like, so you've you got to hit 4-4 four, four time. You've got to participate, you know, and you've got to be part of 
like you've got to be part of what everyone else is doing, but you don't do it the same as everybody else is doing, right? So like with your example with music, mm-hmm. and we both play music, some, and so don't downplay it. You're, you're a great musician. Well, thanks. I, I heard just like five. You heard me play for like thirty seconds. Thirty seconds, so. which is enough to, yeah, you're good. Um, all like both of the licks that I play, so. But, like, as a musician, you know, there's one way of doing mus- of doing musicianship and being, like, um, Dude, out for your own fame. I hate to break this own... to you, but, like, none of these lights are on. Yeah, I kind of realized that a minute ago, and I was like, maybe he's just, like, has something else going on, and he didn't mean to turn the lights on. No. But, so this will be, like, a theme through your videos. Like, the other one, where you turn the lights on, like, a few minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> With Nick. Yep. Yep. So this is going to be something that you have to say now. You have what? to like start the video and then a few minutes in be like, oh, now i got to turn the lights on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh, I just like slammed myself into that mic. That's going to be loud. Which means that like all these settings are off. No, you look beautiful. Wow. Oh, thanks, man. I get that a lot. Wow. I can't really see what I look like. I'm sure it's all right. I'm sure it's not bad. Whatever. But so anyway, so we were talking about music. Yeah, and right? how you're like... As an example of like doing it kind of legit yeah. versus doing it the way everyone else does it, right? You know, yeah. Because if I, as someone who follows Christ, do music, that's going to be reflected in the content of the music. You know, mm-hmm. It's going to be reflected in the way I relate to other musicians, the way that I treat people um, and love people like Christ, whereas if I'm doing music like the exact same way as everyone else is doing it, I'm going to go out there and I'm just going to be a butt to everyone, you know, and I'm going to be like, it's all about me, you know, you play my music. And you've, you've been um, that way, haven't you? I mean, yeah, there's totally been times that I've just gone out and been pompous myself the word of the week for me or like the month i've been using the word pompous a lot yeah i probably used it like four or five times in the past like three weeks that's wonderful it's like reminds me of like the middle ages it reminds me of the word potpourri Hmm. and then then whenever i think of potpourri i think of poo potpourri you ever heard of that I, i i have heard of that the stuff you spray in the toilet that is excellent stuff by the way I just wanted to like, oh yeah, this, uh, this, my testimony is brought to you by, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I wanted to kind of do that. I wanted to run some ads at the beginning, like fake ads, but, um, I couldn't think of any. Making a fake ad was too much work. You it was up. way too much work. It required me to speak and I'm already doing a poor job of that as is. So, but, so how did we meet? It was inside of a bar. Well, which is really weird because a... I've never drank an alcohol in my life. And did you do it that night? No, I did not. Oh, okay. And so let's clarify that. He was in a bar, but he wasn't drinking. And B, I've probably never... Like, I'm not 100% sure whether or not I've ever been in a bar before. Really? Like, what? Like, when I was with, with a band... Let alone getting a guy's like, number in a bar. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It makes it sound so wonderful. Um, but, but, like... I. I know I was in a nightclub once, you know, where they served alcohol, and it actually smelled worse than the bar that we were in. Like, smelled yeah. more like alcohol than the bar we were in. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and because I was playing at like a battle of the bands kind of thing with uh, with my band. So you um, had to be there. I didn't have to be there. I chose to be there. You chose to be there. I chose okay. to be there, so that my band could be there and represent Christ in that nightclub that smelled like alcohol. Once. I also pooped my pants right before that show. But, <laughs> no but that's that, that's beside the point. <laughs> I want to hear that story. <laughs> I don't want to hear that story. <laughs> no, you don't want to hear that story. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I mean, that's serious. That's bad. I'm sorry that happened to you. You know, it's one of those things that the moment you're like, but I got a sound check in like five minutes. But then on the other hand, you laugh about it like the next day. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened to me. I'm just kidding. Everybody's pooped their pants. I want to write a book that's called <laughs> Everybody Poops Their Pants. <laughs> that sounds like a, a great a great way to share your story with the world. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it would correlate with my life, but 
So we were Somewhere. actually in a bar. We met in a in a bar with like a church small group that was meeting in the bar because it's Kansas City, Missouri. And yes. That's the way. That's the way of Kansas City. Well, every other Thursday we'll like go out. So like Thursdays we'll meet in the church, and then every other Thursday we'll, we'll, we'll just go out and hit the town, which I think is like really cool. Mm-hmm. I think that like you shouldn't be meeting in the church every single time you have a Bible. Study. Like it should be, you know. You, you should you should be able to go out and like talk to other people and it's weird every time I do go out and I always see, speak to somebody and like some kind of conversation pops up mm-hmm. with um, with someone um, that I never met before for, yeah. for instance it, it, this time it was you and then also the guy downstairs Tracy I had a, like a uh, pizza earlier before mm-hmm. all everybody came and had a real good conversation with him but Anyway, so we met at a bar, and um, I said, um, you told me that, I don't even know how it went down. Stephen told me that you guys were going to be there, and in fact, Mm -hmm. I heard that you guys were going to be there, but I had no idea, I mean, like, other than, like, these two people who were going to India, right? Indonesia. Indonesia. Uh, Halfway there, right? (laughs) Uh, Really close. Yeah, totally. Pretty much the same place. And I was like, huh, I wonder if, like they'd want to, like, share their testimony or something like that. Like, I would, it wasn't even, like, one of those things. Like, it, it was it was organic thought. It mm-hmm. wasn't, like... It, wasn't it was like, in the moment. Yeah. It wasn't like you planned out beforehand. It was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to target these people. No, yeah, exactly. exploit them for my, my testimony videos. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, would, which, like, give, like, a year and a half ago, like, probably would have been... Sam would probably do that. But in this case, it was, like, one of those weird things where it was just, like, you know, maybe, maybe not, whatever. And then showed up and met you guys and uh, your wife. You're married. Mm -hmm. You got a child. Married. I have a child. Which is weird because you look, like, 14. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm (laughs) like, 24. That means that whenever you're 34, you'll look... Like, 15. 24. Yeah, sure. This video is going to be called Christians Don't Do, do Math. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm trying to think of that. How would... Whatever. Whatever. But anyway, um, so we met at the bar, and then I said, hey, come over and do this. So now that we got that out of the way, do you believe in Jesus? I do. Okay. Do you believe in God? I, do. I, I believe in God. Did you believe in God first and then Jesus, or did you believe in Jesus and then God? Or, like, how did that look? Did you grow up in a Christian home? Yeah, so I, I grew up with, uh, with Christian parents. I don't know how you define a Christian home. That's kind of a, that's kind of a tricky question, did, for, for me anyway. Did you guys go to church? We went to church. Oh, okay. Cool. We went to church. But, like, when I think Christian home, I think, like, Christian band. You know, like, it's a... I mean, this is not the way we culturally use that. Yeah. It, that's, like, some awkward, some awkward people. But... Um, but it's like, a, oh, by the uh, way, speaking of awkward, my name's Sam and this is Jack. Thanks for the <laughs> intro, Sam. No problem. Jack. Um, so like, I think of like, this band is going to, or is supposed to live like Christ and live out what Christ did. Um, and when I think of like Christian family, I think, well, this family should live like Christ did and live out Christ's love. Um, and that wasn't always quite the story for my family. But yes, we did go to church. Yeah. And actually, my father pastored a small church for a while. A oh, kid. so you were a PK. I was a PK. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I've spoke with anybody on my test. No, this could be the first. I mean, I was kind of a sort of PK, so it wasn't like my dad was a pastor the whole time I was young, um, and he was also, like, a bivocational, like, gets paid a couple hundred dollars a week for pastoring, kind of, like, oh, okay. side gig kind of pastor, not like a, So, like, his full-time job was, like, selling copiers? I wish, yeah, but uh, <laughs> he didn't really have, like, a job job most of my, okay. uh, most of my childhood. Was but, he, like, freelance, or was he just... He's just old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Were you the youngest then? I was actually the only child. 
Ah. Uh, yeah, my dad whoa. is... Whoa, we have a PK and an only child? I know. I know. My dad is seven. You're breaking barriers, man. Seven right now. Yeah? So. Did we? Did you... Were you homeschooled? I was not homeschooled. Oh. You know dang well that I that would have been like the triple play. It would have. You You're know, right, I know, have. like we know, like, but... It would have. Okay, enough stereotyping. Continue. Yeah, so... Um, just a little bit of like my stereotyping story. on my end, by the way, not not your end. My story. Well, thank you for recognizing that yeah. I wasn't the one stereotyping there. <laughs> it's definitely me. Um. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I was like seven, and my mom and I went to a different church because uh, my dad wasn't preaching at the time, and this guy was like total like you're going to hell kind of pastor. Mm. Um, so much so that as a kid, it like scared me. And I was seriously bothered by this guy. I was seriously bothered by this whole, like you're going to hell stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to go to hell. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went home, you know, I talked with my parents and talked to my dad about it. And he, like, are you um, talking 10, 11, 12 or like middle school? No, I was like seven. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like an elementary school kid. It was probably like second grade, okay. third grade, something like that. And my dad sent me down, and he jabbered off all this theological gobbledygook, and I probably fell asleep in the middle of it. Um, but Peter. But I was like, somehow I got out of that, like, man, you know, I need to like believe in Jesus. And so I did, and I'm like, that's it. I'm good. Um, and it, it really, like, coming into this, you and I were talking a little bit about how... Um, when we, like, see ourselves as a failure, you know, when we live in kind of this fear of failure, it, it rubs off on other people around us. Yeah. Um, and I think that was, that's, like, one of the main qualities that I see in my dad, you know, is that he always, like, saw himself as a failure. You know, and because of that, I think I felt like, gosh, you know, I'm not accomplishing or achieving what I need to either. Like, like I'm definitely screwing up all the time. Like, I can't be good enough. So even even though I believed in Jesus and, like, as a PK, I had all this knowledge, you know, all these, like, could rattle off Bible stories and memory verses and, like, all this stuff, um, I was still, in a sense, like, worshiping this idea that, like, man, you know, I need to, like, achieve and, like, not be a failure. Yeah. Um, and I was so bent on not being a failure that I, like, constantly felt like a failure anyway. Are you talking primarily, like, financially or, like, emotionally or spiritually? <sighs> well, for most of this, I was a kid. So I wasn't like, man, you know, my job <laughs> sucks. <laughs> I need to, I'm like, I need to get, get rid of this janitor gig and, like, get something better. Um, Nothing against you janitors out there listening. Yeah, no, but a lot of it was just emotionally, you know, it was just in my spirit, you yeah. know, feeling like relationally, like nobody wanted me or cared about me. Um, and, and it just really, it really crushed me. Were you, were you, what, what, were you in a clique in a high school or like middle school? Like, um, I was, I was kind of in a clique of one, uh, definitely in middle school. I'd like had nobody to hang out with. Um, there was this one kid that kind of became my best friend that had some, like, uh, I mean, he had some issues. He had, he had some, like, diagnosed mental issues. Were you talking, um, like, Asperger's, or were you talking about, like, sociopaths? No, or probably, like, Asperger's kind of stuff. Okay. But, uh, I mean, he was a really nice guy, you know, and, and really, I think, really cared about me, but, but that was, like, my only friend at the time. Sure. You know, and, and so it was... Uh, so that was difficult, you know, and then high school was, was similar that I didn't really have any friends that I saw like outside of school. Yeah. You know, it was just like, there were a few people that I hung out with during school, but then afterwards I just go home. Mm -hmm. Um, and probably the hardest part, you know, the part that contributed to this besides my dad seeing himself as a failure and me learning from him to see myself as a failure, uh, was that, uh, we lived also with my grandmother, um, and she was mentally ill, um, and so she was always yelling at us and cussing us out, um, and to an extent, like, as a kid, I understood, like, okay, she's mentally ill, she's not right, you know, this is not her, this is not right, 
but still there was the trauma of like, oh my gosh, you know, she's threatening us, she's like saying bad things about us, she's calling us names, and like, how do I deal with this? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any healthy way to deal with that as a kid. Um, so by by college, I was binge eating, I was spending all my time just watching like uh, pirated movies on the internet, I was addicted to porn. Um, live you know, wire. Like, did you masturbating wire? sometimes, multiple times a day. I actually have no idea what live wire is. Or like Napster? What year did you graduate? 2012, right? 2012, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was whenever like internet was like fast. Yeah. 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 Because like, if I go back in time, there was like live wire. And so you would have to like, live wire was, was, you know what Napster is? No. Okay. Do you know what? I'm proving myself illiterate here. This is like. It, well, it's basically, like, it's a torrent program, like, okay. to, where you can, like, torrent different, like, songs right. and music and video oh, and, and whatever. So, Livewire was, like, this lime looking, and, dude, I remember, oh, gosh, we would, we would just, we would just download movies, any movie we wanted. Yeah. Well. And I say we, because it was, like, me and my buddy, and then, like, we didn't even know what it was. Oh, you know funny. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like no, we, I were, get that. we were, we were like, you know, like we thought these were movies. Right. These are these are what movies. Like we knew that we weren't supposed to be watching them, <laughs> and we like, but we didn't like know what to do. So it was kind of like we would download them, and then we would just sit there and just kind of like watch them. Mm -hmm. I remember like his sister came came and like banged on the door and like, what are you guys doing in there? And we we're just like turning out the volume or whatever. But like it was. Mm -hmm. Totally should never have been, like, left alone, but we would just watch for, like, hour, two, three hours. Yeah. I told you this would be just as much my testimony as yours, right? No, right, totally. <laughs> so totally. I, I, I hear you whenever you yeah. say that. Yeah, well, and I mean, I, and I was doing that, like, by myself, you know, and sometimes it would just be, like, from the time that I got home from school or later from college, um, you know, t until, like, midnight, you know, and I would just yeah. sit and, like, eat Cheetos and... Uh, you and watch whatever you know I could find, whatever action movies I could find, or whatever. And so it wasn't just porn um, from after school to twelve o'clock. No, no, no. It was okay. not. It was not just <laughs> eight hours of porn. <laughs> okay. Um. But yeah, I would I commend mean, so, you if it if you so, the eight hour. That so would, I mean, I full like job, full time job. I mean, just to put it in perspective, like one one of those summers, I watched the entirety of NCIS. <laughs> oh which God, isn't that like, which is like I mean, it's been around for like twenty years. I mean, so I've I mean, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Plus, you were downloading them too, like, weren't you? No, no, no. I, I didn't download anything. It was just like streaming. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. Sorry, totally different era of just like you were yeah. you were streaming at that point. How old are you? I'm like forty. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am twenty seven years old. Okay, so you're just a couple years older than me then, but... That means that this camera needs to be... Rebooped. Rebooped yeah. the camera. Rebooped. Mm -hmm. Reboop it. And then another... Add another 30 minutes onto that, which would be 4... Oh, 4 o'clock. Uh, there's, there's a better way to do it, but it, it would require me spending like five grand on cameras Holy so it's, instead we get this like awkward actually it's not even awkward it's just like just uh, I, that's what i love this I, that's what i want people to like experience though like the setup i have like the g7 the hero 4 and the canon 60 amazon is on links below <laughs> 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 they put in the description below like go ahead and click on that link i totally don't make any money off of it i do but to, like, th this tripod over here was, like, $20 because I got it at Best Buy from a friend who gave me 50% off. That tripod I got with my camera, used camera that I bought way long ago. This tripod is the newest, and it was, like, $120. Also a great tripod. Amazon reviews is awesome. Uh, I ended up just choosing the one with the best reviews, and it worked out really great. That's going to be in the link in the description. <laughs> I've never done that any of these, but... Uh, I pride, my, I pride myself as a little bit of a salesman, so links in the description below. <laughs> okay, yeah. go ahead, Jack. Uh, let's see where we're at. Uh, basically, well, you were going home, and this was you're right. on to like high school or college now. Yeah, like late high school, early college, kind of, uh, kind of stuff. And I was, 
I, I was really depressed, you know, and I would have suicidal thoughts a lot. Yeah. Um, and probably one of the most, uh, like, hurtful experiences of my life, I, like, tried to bring it up with my parents once. Mm-hmm. Like, and, you know, like, I was like, hey, you know, I've been, like, doing this you know, self-mutilation stuff, like, cutting myself. Um, and literally, my dad's just like, why would you do that? And walks out of the room and never brings it up again. And that was, like, the end of conversation. And it's just, like, as a teenager, what are you supposed to do with that? Like, like how, how is that you know, loving somebody? You know, how is that helping somebody out? And so it was just, like, gosh, you know, I'm alone in this. Yeah. You know? um, and I was trapped in that through most of college. You know, um, and I mean, it really, it really hurt my life a lot. You know, the way that I related to people, the way that I thought about people. Um, you know, especially the way that I thought about the way that I talked to like women that I interacted with. You know, and people that I knew because I was still like going to church. You know, I was still involved in in ministry stuff, but. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just trapped in that. Well, um, your reflection of your your relationship with God is a reflection of the relationship with your uh, earthly father, and your earthly father's relationship with him is almost a direct reflection to just a relationship with everybody else. I don't know if I I just I, I was thinking that. Do you see that? I, yeah, I I see that some. Uh, it's definitely something that we can that we can overcome, you know, that we have to, like, it's a, it's a big learning process to learn, like, oh, shoot, my heavenly father doesn't necessarily see me the same way that my earthly father does. Yeah. You know, and, and... But it's just, like, this false kind of reality of, like, how your father treats you is, like, how, like, the person who's closest to you, how they, how they treat you is going to, is going to affect how you are with strangers are you better with strangers or people who are close with you Mm, that's that's a good question um i really i really love being around people yeah i'm a a people person and i'm like kind of in a gray space between introvert and extrovert you know i'm not super either one yeah um but i do like i would much rather be around people than be alone by myself yeah um you know, and and I really enjoy um, getting to know new people, but uh, sometimes I have some awkward space between like um, like meeting them, you know, having that initial conversation, and like kind of being friends. You know, mm-hmm. and and so sometimes and it's probably that way for everybody, but sometimes it's just really hard to navigate that. You need to navigate that space to get from point A to kind of a, a deeper relationship. Sure. For me, I'm, I'm like, and not only that, but definitely my grandfather. I worked with him for a while. And mm-hmm. we're, one similarity between both of us is that we're really, it's almost, I remember telling somebody once, like, I love strangers more than I love my family. Which is like, I get it, it's not good. Or maybe it is good. Maybe it's something that it can become a, ble- but just that idea of like, and I'd see it with my grandfather. Mm-hmm. You know, people who'd come in, um, he, were in a, he did HVAC and plumbing, and people who'd come into his shop who were the farthest thing away from family, and he treated them like a brother, treated them like a sister, treated them like a grandson. Yeah. And then I'd sit there and then just kind of like witness this and go. Mm-hmm. But it was like a like, moment what where about I was me? like, it, w- it, was, it was a little bit of that, but then also it was like, that is totally me. Mm. I'm so similar to my grandfather and mm. my father as well. But you kind of, you, you confess these sins to your father uh, and, and kind of he walked out. Well, I definitely didn't confess all that to my father, but I told him about, you know, struggling with depression, kind of where I was at with that. Yeah. And he just walked out. Nothing. So what the hell did you do at that point? Um, 
I mean, you know, I, I didn't know what to do about it at that point. And at that point, I just continued to try and to try and solve the problem by myself, you know, and I'm like, man, you know, I've, and probably from the first time that I like, um, that I like watched porn, I was like, oh my gosh, I shouldn't do this again. Like, this is a bad thing. Yeah. You know, and so uh, at the point where I realized that I was addicted to it, I was like, man, I got to stop doing this, you know, so I'd go like a week or I'd go a month, you know, or I'd go, you know, a few days and be like, man, you know, this is, this is great. I haven't watched porn in a while and you know, I got to keep doing this and then it just wouldn't work, you know, because I had all these other, all this other baggage that was driving me to that, you know, that was driving me to that coping mechanism that really wasn't doing anything good for me. Sure. It was, it was your cigarette. Pretty much. It was your, um, crack rock. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so like, (laughs) then fast forward to like, I feel like that's a really bad example. (laughs) I mean, it probably is, and I've never, but, I've never done drugs, you know, so I don't know what that's, uh, what well, that's you have. like. But it is. Porno- You're pornography right. affects You're right. your it your, is. your it brain does. just as much as I think cocaine or, or yeah. any other. And, and don't quote me on that, but I know it's something that it stimulates your mind. Just he's going to link as, to the study in the description. Yeah, I know. Shows that. Yep. Uh, but um, I make money off of that, so. Yeah. So give him some money. <laughs> Patreon is going to be... I don't even know if I put the Patreon... I do. I'll put the Patreon link. It ain't about me making money, okay? It's about hearing your story. Fill me in. So, you- so like, my junior year of college into my senior year of college, I met some really, really, really great guys. Um, and I met them through a campus ministry at the college where I was. And I met an older man as well that was willing to take me under his arm and to really mentor me and um, do what is sometimes called in the in Christian circles like disciple me yeah which basically means he came alongside me and he says okay you know I'm not gonna condemn you I'm not gonna judge you I'm gonna do my best to show you how I walk with Christ so that you can also walk with Christ and uh, and and have a better life because of it that wasn't the right alarm. There should be another 15 minutes. Oh, I see. What, what was the guy's name, the older guy's name? Uh, his name is Mark. 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 And fill me in on like a time where you told your father and then you met Mark. <sighs> so that's got to be at least... And then how old you are? Five years, right? Five years ago? It's about five years between oh. those two. Oh, okay. So was that, would you two. say like that was probably your darkest time kind of in between? Oh, Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And you were continuing to cut, and you were continuing to watch pornography, and... I actually didn't cut that much. Yeah. Uh, it's just something I kind of messed with a few times, but, um, but, you know, like I was saying, the fact that my dad just kind of blew it off was like... Yeah. 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 It was almost like a cry to help to do that. It was. And then it really you could, was. you could almost say, bring this to your father instead of the pornography, which is what you were really... And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe I'm reading too far into it, but um, did you tell your father about p- pornography? No, I did But you told him about the cutting. Well, and, and I, like, even tried to once bring that up with my father. Yeah. Know, to be like, to be like, well, you know, is, is like, masturbation, you know, is porn, is this, like, really, is this wrong? Is this, is this a bad thing to do? Um, and he just kind of hummed and hawed about it. It's like, well, you know, sometimes it keeps people from doing something worse, and sure. like, um, and like whatever. And 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 part of that is like, you know, that was around the time that I was kind of experimenting with that stuff and kind of um, not nearly as deep into it, you know, and and just the fact that he was just like, well, you know, it's what, yeah, you know, it was like, did nothing to help me not do it, you know, yeah. And you get that, like, rumble in your tummy that is, like, if I were this person, I'd do it differently. Like, if I was a father, I'd do, do it differently. If I was a pastor, I would do it differently. At least that's for me. Anytime that I, some, somebody kind of, somebody hurts me, yeah. then I, I immediately, like, flip it around and be like, if I was them, they would, I would be so, it would, it would be better. Like, I would be whatever. But that's sure that's more than just me a lot of people yeah i mean a lot of times there is that you know 
like that wish that man, you know, if I was, if I would have been my father, I hope I could have done a better job. Yeah. So you met Mark. I met Mark, and and Mark taught me um, one of the most valuable things that I've ever learned, and one thing that, like, I don't know how I'm. I mean, I'm sure it was taught in some way in some church environment that I was in because of. Sure, I went to church like five thousand times, you know, in mm-hmm. my life, and like you to all these different events and camps and youth groups and stuff. But it's just that, hey, you know, God has the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us as believers, and we have access to God's power through the Holy Spirit, and God calls us to use His power by walking in the Holy Spirit. Um, and so that that along with just having support, just having people in my life really just having any people in my life just having somebody to yeah I mean it, and it wasn't just Mark it was a lot of other friends that put things to do that kind of intersect intersected my life you know that pulled I was, you out of the bedroom <laughs> right that pulled me out of my bedroom that pulled me away from my grandmother who was yelling and screaming at me all the time um, so when you were going to college you were still living at home you were commuting mm-hmm. okay. yeah yeah because gotcha money yeah but yeah, and, and it was interesting, you know, more recently as I've thought about this, you know, as I've thought about my testimony, as I've thought about all the crap that I did, I look back and it's not like all that time I didn't have a relationship with God. Sure. You know, it's not like all that time God was just like, okay, forget about you. You've like screwed up too much. Because that's what I believed about myself for a while, you know, and, and there was, were times in there where I... If someone would ask me, I probably legitimately believed that, like, well, you know, I have, I was a Christian, and, like, and now I've done so much bad stuff that I'm not really even a Christian anymore. And so if I, like, killed myself right now, I'd just go to hell. Um, but. What stopped you? <laughs> ironically, um, I think, one, not wanting to disappoint my parents um, and feared that I would go to hell because like just like my seven year old self I still didn't want to go to hell so you had so suicidal was, thoughts at seven eight no no, no like at, at okay. seven like when I first came to know about Christ okay it was like I didn't want to go to hell yeah you know, I was like man you know I, I need Jesus because I don't want to go to hell sure and it was that it was the whole like not wanting to go to hell that continued to motivate me to not commit suicide yeah besides not wanting to disappoint my parents yeah so you had a fear of death yeah I guess you could say that yeah so you had the fear of death <laughs> and my my jaw like <laughs> I get real lazy with it you know what I'm talking about were you inquire diction unique New York unique oh, yeah. New York sometimes I'll listen back yeah, on yeah, these, and then I'll think to myself, "Man, my, I can't." Get what my, you're yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Side no, note. It's all good. Um, but you were going to school, and you'd met this guy named Mark, and um, so were you going to church at this time, or part oh, yeah. of like a yeah, group? I was, and like, I was like, doing like on staff with the church at this time. So, okay. Yeah. Um, and. And so I look back now at my life through all that time, and I'm like, how did God manage to get so much done through me, you know, when I saw myself as a failure, Mm -hmm. you know, was addicted to masturbation and porn, um, was spending most of my time watching pirated movies in my bedroom, and binge eating, and... Were Were you a little bigger... I was so so this this is this is kind of a hilarious fact just like um like at the point that I finally you know, met Mark met these other guys and God worked through them in my life I lost you know, in the course of a year or less I lost like 65 70 pounds <laughs> what <laughs> like, I'm not joking I I weighed, at my heaviest, I weighed 230 pounds. My heaviest, 165. <laughs> so you dropped some poundage. I did. 
Were you I going did. to the gym or like were you did you take like No, a... I just I mean I just wasn't sitting in my bed eating all the time. Dang. And I wasn't drinking soda anymore. You were you were a you were a, a, a little piggy, weren't you? I was. <laughs> just sitting in I your was. bed and just watching movies eating all the time. I was. I mean that was Not 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 to not to say not to I don't know why I have to preface it. You know I'm not No, I understand you're not you're not being I'm, judgmental I'm just, about it. Yeah, I'm trying to just imagine. It's it. a nasty reality. But what I was saying was my point was yeah. that like just to look back now and to realize some of the things that God did in my life during that time that God used me for. Um, like uh, you know, like there were there were several different people that uh, that came to Christ, you know, that that uh, that I I talked to, you know, that I shared the gospel with, sure, um, you know, that I'd reasoned with about the faith, about the Bible, you know, that I'd given Bibles to, that started reading the Bible for the first time. You um, begin to minister to people. Well, this happened like during that time. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, like like while you like, were still to look struggling back and, and like say, well, I saw myself this way. Yeah, God continued to use me, which is nuts to me because I'm like I didn't even want to use myself. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to be gone. I just wanted to cease to be. And God's like, no, I'm going to use you for stuff. I'm going to do stuff with you. So are you meaning to say like while you were still struggling with some of these things, like even then, like he was using you as a pawn to like speak to other people? Yeah, precisely. Precisely. And, and to say that you know, that I looked back at those things and I'm like, holy crap, these are like monuments to me that, that he didn't just abandon me, you know, that, that I wasn't alone that whole time, that I didn't screw up so bad that God was suddenly just like, nah, not so much, Jack, you know, I don't really want you anymore. Did you see, um, did you ever feel that like you were, yeah, have a sip. (laughs) I need to sit myself. Um, what's that verse? Taking the uh, log out of the speck out of somebody else's eye when you had a log in your own. Um. Or if, were you that guy? Or what, like, I mean, if so, it definitely wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. I'm saying that because thing. that was me. That was that was like. Like I preaching mean, to people when when like I would go home and go home and masturbate. And then, like, go talk to somebody about, like, how that's, like, not good. And then just, like, go home and, like... I mean, I was definitely really... there. Like, any time that came up, those yeah. kind of things came up, there was just so much shame in it for me that I was just, like, kind of removed from the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, that I... I maybe implicitly I was saying, like, yeah, I don't really struggle with this. But, but I just, like, you know, was very... I guess scared to to even engage in that conversation. Bringing light to darkness. Exactly. So do you remember like exact? Did you share that the the struggles that you had with these guys? Yeah, I did. I did. Like and that was regularly, like, or was this something that where you were just like, hey, I'm. Um, this is a struggle, and then like, you just continued to pursue the word, or like, how did that transition from like, mm. dependent on this to dependent on God. I would I would say I developed that good dependency on God first. Yeah. You know that God taught me that, and then God kind of showed me that I was completely powerless against this stuff myself. Um, and then at that point, it was almost like He just flipped a switch and was like, "Okay, you're free." Like, like, just gone. And it wasn't quite that smooth. You know, just a weeks long process but yeah it was still like yeah. so it was like over a course of like two three years and where did you find your wife in the midst of this were well you... I, I mean so it was over a course of like going from being completely addicted to this stuff you know to like learning these things to like um you know the point where I was I'd say free from these things was like, um, I, I met these guys like one fall and it would probably have been like the following fall or so that I was really, you know, freed from that stuff. Um, 
so it was I mean it felt like a pretty quick a pretty quick thing when it happened anyway yeah yeah so this would have been if you're 25 24 how old mm-hmm. are you 24. yeah I'm 24 so this yeah. would have been like 20 uh like 2015 or like 20 2014 to 2015 so it wasn't even that long ago no it really wasn't have you turned back so one of those things where the last guy I spoke to, he he had a crazy story about how God, dear Jesus, like took a hammer to all the pornographic images in his head. That's awesome. Uh, but like for for like for like you, was it um, was it subtle, or did you have any kind of? Because is if 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 you would have listened to all the other my testimonies, like I told you to. <laughs> I mean, it's only like six or seven hours of video. No, I'm just kidding. I actually just posted it up this morning. By the way, happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you guys, because it's going to be St. Patrick's Day by the time this He's gets uploaded. He's a really cool dude. Huh? He's a really cool dude. St. Patrick? Do you know about St. Patrick? I don't know about St. Patrick. Oh, dude. I mean, other than like he like... I'll tell you the story of St. Patrick here in a minute. Okay. But we were on a different train of thought. We were. So let's finish that train and let's get on the St. Patrick train. Okay. Okay. So he had he he specifically described this uh, as it, Jesus. It was his. He closed his eyes and it was like completely. He wanted to these these images to go away, and like it was pitch black, in his head. He just closed his eyes and then it went pitch black, and then like Jesus was like standing there with this big old hammer, and then like these images would come flying in, and he would just break them with his hammer. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> like, it was dude. like that Thor, is just like. Can you imagine? I kind of want to memify that real quick. No, no, no. Take, like, Jesus and have, like, Thor's, like, in, like, this. (laughs) Yeah. No, that's wicked. Um, But it wasn't like that for you. No, I mean, and there's still, you know, from time to time, there's still images that, you know, that come back that I have to be like, nope, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell on that. You know, I'm not going to make myself, like, you go through that again. You know, I'm not going to. Sure. But, yeah, I, I met my wife pretty, um, I, I mean, I already knew her through part of that time, but you know, I got to know her more, uh, more did, closely, and we started dating. Did she know you whenever you were a little, little bit that. bigger? Yeah. Yeah. Did. yeah. did she love you then? Um, yeah, actually, when we first, when I mean, we first started, I guess dating, did she love you? I should ask that question. Did she? Did your wife love? You? I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> um, let me think about that. <laughs> she tells me it's some. Maybe. <laughs> No, uh, yes, she does. She does love me. But, yeah, so it was pretty shortly after that. Um, and it was, uh, it was a really hard process, you know, after we started dating. You know, there was a certain point, I'm like, okay, you know, she has to know that this was a struggle for me in the past. You know, yeah. and so I shared that with her. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't fully disclose, like, like, hey, you know, this was, like, really close to the time that we started dating that I, like, stopped, stopped, you know, looking at porn and stuff. And so later we had another conversation that was like, for me it was really heart-wrenching, especially because I'd still had a lot of these attitudes of like, I'm a failure, you know, and if I don't succeed I'm going to be rejected, basically. Yeah. And so, you know, at the the time I was like, oh my gosh, is she just going to like break up with me once she hears like how not long ago this was? But she was very... Uh, very supportive you know, and very understanding um, as well as uh, she really recognized you know, the power of God to take these things away and to fight through these things. And so That may have been because she knows how to drive a stick shift and she plays the drums. That's true. That, it, it that plays into it a lot. It, it does. It, I mean, to fill well, you guys in... <laughs> The first thing I learned about she drives his wife, a stick shift. She drives a stick shift. She and, plays drums, and she plays the drums, which is just—it's pretty cool. I was pretty—I was pretty jealous at Jack at that point, because I still haven't found mine, you know. And to everybody, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My bio will be in the link to below, and you can click in that, and it, it, we'll send e- you a link to ta- to Sam's Tinder page. Uh, no, <laughs> my eHarmony <laughs> or Christian Mingle page. Did, yeah. You didn't find 
how, how did you guys meet? No, no, no. So we were both part of the, we were both involved with the same campus ministry. So it wasn't ChristianMingle.com? It was not Christian Mingle. God, I wanted to hear a success story about, like, Christian Mingle so bad. I actually know some people. Maybe they could be on your show. Really? Yeah. I like how you called it a show. It makes me feel official. Yeah, I mean, it is official. It's on YouTube. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a tag. Like, this is official, says Jack. <laughs> Hashtag. Wait, wait. Hashtag is at the beginning. But whatever. Hashtag Jack says it's official. Yeah. So, you weren't... You were... You, this is... 22, 22. Dude, a lot has happened in the past, like, few years for you. A crazy lot. Yeah. A crazy lot. We haven't even gotten into the fact that you're going to Indonesia. Yeah. Which is nuts. Did you finish sc- college then? Yeah, I finished college. Oh. I finished... Co- I graduated in 2016. Okay, 2016, 2019. That was early, wasn't it? 2016, because you no. graduated. 2000. Okay, yeah. No, it was right on time. Right on time. Mm-hmm. Just barely, because I like. Actually, right on time nowadays to... is like <laughs> five years of school. Like I'm sure that I think that the average. I had to take four levels of econ for my for my degree, and and the upper two are like calculus based, and so like the the fourth level I I failed once and I had to retake it. Boring. You know how many times I failed math? Four times, and then the fifth time I passed it because I, uh, it, it was the teacher didn't grade homework, and she didn't care if we showed work or not. We just had to come to the right answer. Right. Yeah. So I tested into one of the highest math classes, even though I failed the math class in high school. And then I took it four semesters, and then finally the fifth semester, the teacher it was. Yeah. It, the teacher just didn't... I, I, well, I got, like, a C plus. I mean, like, I would just show up to take the test, and I'm just trying to say I'm smart, Jack. That's it. I can tell you're very intelligent. Thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm very emotionally, like, pulled in with myself as far as, like... Man, you should have was Kleenex a... on this table with these coasters and this yeah. stump. Yeah, where is the coasters? think your dog ate him. I don't have a dog, but I'm sad. Whose dog is that? Is there a dog? Oh, that one? No, I'm just messing with you. I know. Messing with the people that, yeah. Oh, that one? Okay. Moving on. Where were we? Oh, well, so... You got saved. I mean, well, kind of what I was saying was that I realized I was already saved. Okay. Like, like, I realized there was a time of intense doubt, you know, where I was, like, didn't really think I was even saved anymore. Sure. But, you know, I, like, God showed me, like, no, like, I've been working in your life this whole time. You know, you've had a relationship with me this whole time. So, what is your, what do you, what do you define as being, like, when did you feel like Jesus, like, straight up entered your heart? I mean, I think when I was, like, seven. That's yeah. what I would say. So, like, at seven to, like, now, you'd be going to he- heaven? Yeah, definitely. Or was it, like, you didn't, like... Okay. Oh, oh, so you have, like, that one belief where, like, if you, if you, if you believe, then you will always be a... Is that a Calvinist or something? Um, I mean, sometimes it's called, like, eternal security, um, or it's, it's kind of associated with Calvinism. Yeah. Okay. So, you were chosen. You believe in, like, being chosen, then? I mean, I would say that... I, yes, yes. So I you, do. like, believe in predestination? Yeah. Okay. Cool. But, like, a special different kind of predestination, because, like... Cause like, see, I, I don't I don't know if I believe that, but it would make sense. See, it gets really complicated because we have a perspective, and this is our perspective, and God has a perspective, and He sure. sees like all the perspectives because He's God. Yeah. Right. You know, He knows everything, so we have a choice, and the people around us have a choice, and. We don't know what choice the people around us are going to make. Yeah. But God knows. 
And he's not going to tell us. Right. He's not going to tell me that, like, oh, yeah, Sam's going to... You know, Sam's going to decide to be a Christian, but Joseph's not. Um, My dog's name is actually Danny, not Joseph. No, I, I was talking about the camera guy. Um, <laughs> okay. But... So it's not like, uh, it's not like, you know, something that we can use to predict. It's just encouraging for us as believers, you know, that like, oh, I'm not going to just screw up so bad that God's going to, like, suddenly reject me. Yeah. You know? But you said that God has his perspective, and then we have our perspective. Wouldn't that be your perspective? Sort of that's God's perspective. So that's what God, God tells us. He says, I chose you. Yeah. Like, you're a believer, you know me, I chose you. Yeah. Like, you don't believe in me because you're just so smart, you know, and you out-reasoned everybody else, and you realize that there's a God. You don't, you know, you don't believe in me because of anything that you did, but it's because of my work. It's because sure. of what I did in your life. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Have you ever gotten into, like, a heated argument regarding predestination? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, and in general, I try to, when it comes to theology, I try to kind of major on the majors, you know, major on what the Bible says. Yeah. I mean, I, I do have various other, I guess you could say, opinions, persuasions, but... I've never been, like, stricken to, like... Like, I've got friends that, like, dive deep into, like, evolution and, like, how that coincides mm-hmm. within the seven days. And yeah. I've got people who... Um, but for me, I've never really, like, I, it's never been an interest of mine. And I yeah. say that, and, like, in, like, three weeks, I'm going to be deep into, like, figuring out what. Yeah, I how. mean, and, and the thing is, there's, like, um, like, Paul said, whatever is, like, good and pure, you know, and righteous, like, dwell on these things. Um, you know, so we don't want to, we don't want to get wrapped up in worldly arguments, yeah. you know, because when we get to the other side, you know, when we get to heaven, you know, as we're drawing people into God's kingdom, it doesn't matter which side of the, if you will, theological fence we're on, you know, it's like when we pick these like stern theological positions to argue about, we're just like setting ourselves up to divide God's kingdom, you know, to say like there's these people and there's my people and my people are right and these people are wrong. Yeah. You know, I mean, and there is a place that we make that distinction, you know, right? Like, the Bible's true. Jesus is God's son. Um, you know, he's the only way to God. And things like that. But when it comes to things that the Bible maybe doesn't say explicitly, you know, or the Bible doesn't talk about fully, and so it's just arguing about how we organize the Bible or how we organize our theology, it's like, it's not going to benefit us. It's not going to further God's kingdom if we just sit and argue about it. So when you speak to people about um, being saved, you preach it on, or not, I don't know if preaching would be the word, right word, but you communicate it on terms of if you want to be saved, you can be saved today, right now, this moment. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, like in terms of God wants to have a relationship with you. Yeah. You know, God desires that humans, the people, be drawn to himself. How do you get to communicate that? Or why, do you, why, is, it, why is it you that gets to communicate that? Because God has given us a duty as believers to do it. Yeah. You know, because he's equipped us for it. He's chosen us for it. Okay. That's what I'd say, anyway. Do you have a different opinion? Um, no, not really. I mean, like, no, I, I, I see and I agree. But as far as, like, when I believed and, like, when I started, I always saw it as, like, the moment that I started actually seeking. So I've been, mm. like, hardcore into Psalms and Proverbs lately and just, like, it's... I feel like every single chapter is the same thing, as in, like, he starts out, 
a little bit broken or confused or however. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of it, he's found some type of truth, some kind of, well, not some type, some kind, but, like, he finds truth. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I mean, you, you could almost say that that, like, it, I feel like if you ever share with somebody, like, to read a chapter out of Proverbs every day, like, you shouldn't just leave it at that. You should follow it up with something like, if you read a Proverbs every single day, like, understand that that's actually David. That's somebody who actually sat down and wrote that. And, um, or Solomon. Is it Solomon? David wrote, like, most of Solomon, or uh, Psalms, and then Proverbs was written... Mostly by Solomon. Mostly by, by Solomon, I think. I, I know that, yeah, I know that most of it's Solomon. Regardless, the writer... Yeah. Is it, but, but saying that, you know, there's actually somebody who was writing this. It was somebody that, that started out and they sat down and they, and they wrote it. And I guess I don't know where I'm going with this, other than the fact that... Oh, so you were saying that you think that, like, your relationship with God started when you began to seek God. Yes. Um... But then now I'm thinking to myself, does that mean that every time that I'm not seeking God, that I am not a Christian? I don't know why I did it like that. But Well, so, so here's, here's the question that, that, I think, that I think has to be the deciding factor you know, in how you like, define that and how you define, like, if you will, because the word that we use for it, how you define conversion. How do you define, like, who's a Christian and who's not? Yeah. Because you know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me, which you've heard before, right? Sure. And so, if you're seeking God through Jesus, then you're coming to God through Jesus. Yeah. But if you're seeking God, and you mean by that, that, well, I'm going to try out Buddhism, and I'm going to try out Taoism, and I'm going to try out whatever else to see if I can find God then you're not going through Jesus and sure the Bible says that through Jesus is the only way to get to God so, so how would you I guess my question is I should have stated that as a question to start with is like how would you define seeking God um by seeking knowledge and wisdom from his word. Through the Bible. Sure. Mm -hmm. But can you actually, can you do it without the Bible? I would say yes. Well, I mean, I I think without like having the written word of scripture... I want to be careful with how I answer that question because I feel like that's that wasn't a question I want to be careful with how I respond to that statement because uh, like on one hand it's not like you're going to go and you're going to read um, you know, you're going to recite a bunch of uh, things from the Bhagavad Gita or something and suddenly it's going to lead you to Jesus Right. I mean, God can use anything, but like humanly speaking, you're not going to be reading a you know textbook or something and be like suddenly, oh shoot! I just realized like Jesus is the way to God. Right. Yeah, but I don't think that it would be like Jesus. I think it would be like oh shoot, there's somebody. There's, there's a sacrifice that was made for my life. And it was the greatest sacrifice. I mean, there's several stories that are aligned with the Bible. Very similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are some really similar. And so... Really what similar stories out there. So, like, what would... would 
if you if you saw um, God as Osiris and um, Jesus as his son who was whatever his name is you know what I'm talking about the Egyptian religion I actually don't know the name but I, I get I get where you're going but yeah if it whether whether you call him Jesus or whether you call him like dude or brother or I guess brother would be weird but like whatever you call him I think that people can come to the conclusion of like there is a creator okay step one right there's a creator whether you're not you you've read the bible or read anything you can say there's somebody who created everything all right so you'd call god a creator Mm -hmm. yeah in whatever language you are and then from that you can kind of pull and say um you know like does that creator know me does he know who i am is that creator does he you know then then you move through all these emotions and then you and then you kind of fall like flat on your face with like the word love does your does my creator love me you know cuz that's that's kind of the if you're to work your through way through all of these mm-hmm. questions like what does any human really want to know about somebody else like do they love me right yeah do, do they love me and then um and then also another one would be like, are they like me? You know, mm-hmm. like any relationship that you're seeking, you want to know, are, is, this, is this person anything like me? Mm-hmm. And then the next question that would follow would be like, do they love me? Because I think they're a lot like me and I think I love them, right? And so I guess I'm stating the case that people, um, regardless of where they are, or what they've been taught, whether it's that that they can know God and they can know Jesus without reading the Bible. Um, if it's at your fingertips, then like yeah, jump on it. Great. Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't you read that? But if it's not at your fingertips, if you're living on an island and you're a pygmy, and you look up at the sun and you know, I mean, then it kind of like tracks into communion. Like, what do you see is the the sacrifice the blood and the and the um, and the body and what do you see those as I think that people can if you really truly think about it like dial it into that maybe it's not those specific symbols but it is so so anyway that's my that's my yeah theory, no theory thank you that. so much for for kind of sharing your your perspective your theory on that. Um, and, you know, and I really appreciate that in your own life, you know, that, that you have sought God, you know, and that's brought you to Jesus, you know, it's brought you to faith in Jesus. Um, but I, th- I think for me personally, what I'd say about, like, your scenario about the people out in Pygmy or whatever, um, that, like, you know, unless, unless someone tells them, unless someone tells them about Christ, they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna figure that out on their own, you know. And there are many stories of like people in in remote places, you know, that have had like a very similar story, like like a story about uh, where they were waiting for um, a savior, or waiting for information about a savior, or um, you know, where they had maybe some kind of legend, and then suddenly somebody comes and tells them, and they're like wow, this is what I've been waiting for for all these years. Um, and so, you know, there... Unless we, as Christians, you know, devote ourselves to to telling people, you know, and to telling other people, like, you know, they're not just going to... In general, they're not just going to stumble onto it. And I mean, there are people that see visions. You know, God shows people through visions, um, shows them Jesus, and so they start to seek Jesus that way. Um, you know, and there are people that, you know, that through other miraculous ways that God works, that come to know Him. But for the most part, you know, they need somebody to tell them. And that's what your job is. Yeah, kind of. Um, and. Like, uh, 
Paul says something really, really similar to that. You know, in some of his writings, he says like, uh, like how can they, how can they? I forget the exact wording. But it's like how can they know? You know, how can people know unless someone tells them? It's that faith comes through hearing, and hearing comes through knowing the word of God. So is that why you're going to Indonesia to share this with people there? Yeah, it's so that you know, so that we can encourage and, and build up the the believers there, you know, and so that we can uh, um, you know, support them in in living out uh, what what Christ has commanded us to do and living out Christ's love. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've always I've always thought. Um, this is me coming in from like another direction and hitting the side of your car, but you're going to deal with it. <laughs> I am. But, um, anytime I think of like missionary work is that there is, there is, I don't know why I think so deeply on this and how I'm going to, <laughs> but I see a nation leading other nations, and I think that um, I see so much brokenness inside this in, inside this country that um, that it's probably I just flat out say it <laughs> it's probably a best idea the best practice to like s- start with like your neighbor before you like fly overseas to some other country and then like jump in there and be like hey guys but no that's no, not just to light like a fire under your tail but that's that's just kind of no, like, you're totally right you're, you're totally right that you know that we as as individuals and as a church and as a nation should um should live out christ's love you know and live out the gospel in a way that we largely as Christians haven't been doing for the past couple hundred years. Yeah. And so I mean seriously to the rest of you know th- the non-Christians out there if you're not a Christian sorry that we haven't lived the way Christ told us to live. You know, are you looking into the camera? Lived out are you breaking love. the rule? That's the rule of the, the third or something. I don't know what it is. I looked in the camera earlier. Sorry. No, but I was doing it. I was looking at the camera yeah. so I could apologize. Yeah. For Christians. You don't have to do that. That's like apologizing for being but white. But also, you'd be encouraged to know that most of the world's missionaries are not sent out from the United States. Yeah. It's, I think it's like a third now that are sent out from the U.S. Do you think that there's a lot of people who are sent to the U.S.? Do you think that there's uh, any missionaries There are some, but there's s- not... Sent to the U.S.? Not, not a lot, maybe. I would imagine that'd be more the case. Like, people from all over the world would be wanting to come to America to... Yeah. Become a missionary. Well, I mean, because a lot of places around the world, you know, they, they watch our TV shows and they're like, oh my gosh, these people are lewd, they're sexually promiscuous, which isn't necessarily wrong. Like, look at our lives. Yeah. Um, well, it is wrong. I mean, like, television today is... Way out there. Yeah. It's very taboo. 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 Yeah. It's kind of down the... But no, I don't think... No, dude, I don't think you should, you should ever feel like you... Not feel. I think that... You have the feeling, yeah. Like I've, I, I don't care what you feel or how you feel. I mean, I do, but I don't think it's it. You should feel any kind of any sort of guilt for what um, others ha- have done. Mm. I I think I think there's there's truth in that that you shouldn't feel guilt for it, but I think also sometimes when we're part of a group and we're and we're from a very individualistic culture. Sure, but. Sometimes we're part of a group, you know, and to others on the outside of the group, we're perceived as part of the group, right? You know, as, as people, if I'm like, um, so for instance, if I, if I mention to you, like, I went to XYZ Church in Kansas City, and you're like, oh man, I used to go to XYZ Church, but the pastor there hit me upside the head the last time I was there. We got in an argument, and he just, like, sucker punched me and never apologized for it. Yeah. Right? 
I would want to say, man, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm, I'm so sorry that you had that experience because I, I really love XYZ Church and I'm glad that it's, it's ministered in my life, but I'm really sorry that, that your experience was so poor and that when you went there, we as a church didn't represent Christ well to you. Mm-hmm. See, you my, see what I'm getting at? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I guess my reaction to that would be like, um, not I'm sorry, but I hope that you um, don't take that individual and then generalize the rest of it, the rest of the sermon team, yeah. the pastors who are part of it. Who some other guys uh, go maybe like, hey, in fact, like, I disagree with a lot of things that they said, or I agree with them, or just like make a conversation out of it. Um, I think that when... Hmm. I almost said, well, I, it's totally irrelevant to, to how I think. Uh, you ever think something and then like, it's then like it's a brick gone. wall. Well, no, it's like a brick wall that you have to like puncture through and you have to actually speak it out loud to like yeah. get past the wall. I, I get you. It's so, like I this idea you. of like apologize, apologizing makes you look weak. I, I don't believe that apologizing makes you le- look weak, but, um, this is the brick wall that like I had to say it to be able to get past it. But I, I, I just see I just see too much apologizing going on in in um, America today for for things that people don't need to apologize for. Um, I'm trying to give you an example without getting too political. <laughs> um, oh well, sure, whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll jump to it. It's like apologizing for being white, for being, um, you know, white people had slaves, right? They held slaves, like, and, like, that's, like, something that um, I, 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 I felt like I should, I should apologize for. So whenever I say that it's, it's wrong for you to, to feel, like, that's why I kind of backtracked that and said that, like, me like I felt that I felt like I've had to apologize for like slavery and stuff but then if you look into the look into history pretty much everybody was slaves and then if you look into it even deeper I'm I'm very Irish and um I don't know if you were familiar what happened with the Irish whenever they first came over to America but I'm not super familiar so the Irish that came over is that they would become slaves, but they would only be slaves for seven years. And then after that, they would get their freedom, mm-hmm. right? So most of them died. So basically, um, that was law of the land. Like that you, would, you, you could have an Irish slave for seven years. So they would work them to death is pretty much it. Wow. Is that they would, they would get worked to death, and then before the seven years, they would probably die. Um, so... I think in America today, there's a lot of apologizing and then also kind of just um, lack of, not lack of knowledge. Because did you know that? I had no idea about that. Yeah. So, so like, you, you put that into the mix is the Irish were persecuted. Um, and, then, and then you go, well, wait a second. This whole white guilt thing is like, mm-hmm. like hold up here there's a large percentage of Irish that are here in America. Like, understand that they were persecuted. But then you even take out more of those people, the Italians, the um, uh, Germans, and the um, oh, Russians that come over. I don't know <laughs> how many Russians we had. French, we had a lot of French come, right? But, um, and then you also account into, like, how... But thoughts. Well, kind of just like, I mean, I mean. So here's here's a like a, another thought. Maybe maybe it's not our job to apologize, right? Maybe we don't owe an apology there. Yeah. Right? Maybe we shouldn't be feel guilty or ashamed or or feel dishonorable because of what our broader culture or our group or 
our parents or ancestors did. Yeah. But sometimes an apology can open the door for a relationship that would otherwise be impossible. Right? For instance, there are parts of the world um, where people are taught, you know, even from a young age, that, um, that, you know, that Christians are awful people, that they're murderous, you know, that they came, you know, that they killed a lot of people, a lot of Jews and a lot of Muslims during the Crusades, um, you know, that they've perpetuated other wars, you know, that Christians have come and just decimated, you know, lands with bombs and uh, rockets and grenades and just torn things to bits. Um, and because they've been taught that, you know, for, for years and years and years, they're like, gosh, you know, Christians are awful, terrible, violent people. You know, why would... But I don't want anything to do with a Christian. Sure. Right. And so if that is their main objective to having a relationship with me, um, you know, then I want to make sure that that hurt that they've been taught, that they've been passed on, I want to make sure that, that I don't just ignore that. I don't pretend like, well, your family didn't actually hurt. You know, your nation didn't actually suffer. Because they did. Yeah. Like you pointed out, it's not personally my fault. You know, I didn't go do anything, didn't blow anything up, I didn't kill anybody. But yet, yet, <laughs> no, don't right? Say no, that. no, 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 no. Seriously, <laughs> they, you know, people project that hurt onto other people. Yeah. Um, you know, like for instance, for me, I mentioned my grandmother yelled at me for years and years and years. Right. Mm-hmm. Whenever I encounter an older white woman and they're very stern with me, and they're short with me, I immediately am like, man, that's an awful person. I do not want a relationship with that person. Yeah, but whose right? fault is it? Is that her fault or your fault? It's neither one of our faults, right? Mm-hmm. It's, no, it is. It's, it's, it's your fault. If you, if you project something like that as, as if, you, if you have this, see this veil, if you, put, if you put a veil over her, this older woman's face of um, this person's... I don't want to be around this person because you remind me of this. That that's a veil that you're putting over their face. That's true. So, to say that um, they would need to apologize for, not that they need to apologize because I don't think that you're saying that they need to apologize. I think what you're saying is that um, an apology would open the door to have um, dialogue, which yeah, it could be and it may be true in some occasions, but I think that a majority of times that I'm seeing people apologizing is it's actually um, manipulation and making others feel guilty. Which is not good. No, and I think Which that we can, right. we can agree on that, that that, that, um, that w- would never be right, to have somebody apologize for something when you, in fact, don't feel any pain or hurt based off of it. As in, if you were to come in here and play the guitar and then um, waste my time with your sweet licks <laughs> and uh, show me or whatever and like um, oh, I'm trying to come in a, you, you get what I'm saying I, I, get what I, don't, saying. I don't think I need to even really right. give that if I actually did something you hear yeah if like and it yeah, hurts you yeah I would owe you an apology yeah but well so maybe maybe we've confused apologizing with recognizing someone's hurt Like, broadly, we, like our culture, you know, our society has, in I some situations, that, yeah. confused the need for an apology, apology with the need to recognize someone's hurt. You yeah. know, someone has grown up in a situation with thinking it's normal to hurt this way. It's normal to be treated this way. And what they need is not someone to apologize and say, gosh, I'm sorry you feel that way, but someone to say, man... This is not right. You shouldn't have been treated this way. Let me put it this way, and it's a little bit anecdotal, but most anything, if all conversation here right now has been anecdotal. But for me personally, um, I say lately I've been saying, Lord, help me to forgive. Fill in the blank. Much more than, Lord, I apologize. I'm sorry that I'm 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 weak. I'm sorry that I think I think I I think I maybe 
tapped a little bit of a nail earlier on on the conversation of like your reflection with God being a reflection of your fa- the relationship with you have with your father or even mm-hmm. the relationship with others um, and that a question that was kind of like bearing on me was to ask if Jesus ever apologized he didn't in fact one of the things that really stand out stands out to me is whenever he was on the cross whenever he was <laughs> they damn well should have apologized to that point right mm-hmm. like but instead he says they know not what they've done mm-hmm. and it's almost a prayer yeah. that is in in me that 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 really washes the uh a lot of anger that i have for others mm-hmm. is that over yeah. and over I, I say often that they know not what they've done that that there's people in my life that they truly don't. Um, I'd love to sit down with them and kind of express my feelings toward that individual and say, like, this is how you hurt me, and they said, this is how you, this is how I feel, and like, like, um, but really, where does that lead to? It doesn't. It's vanity. So, um, you get you get me talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it got me no, talking. That's good. Like that's this, good, but. man. You know, but I just I, I fear for I I don't fear for I I fear for the nation um, that that um, we are creating these groups um, group group identities as in if one person um, if if one person does something that it's a complete reflection of everybody else. And when I think it really, it goes back to like, that's not how it should be. It's like, God should be a complete reflection of all of us. But like, it's broken. And it's broken because we have this generalized, it, that one person is a reflection of everybody else. If those kind of like, if, if that, I'm using my hands now at this point, so like, if that makes any sense. And I feel like I'm preaching to you at any point point, be like, Sam, shut up, you're wrong. Or disagree with me, or what do you think? What yeah, are your I'm, thoughts? I'm a little bit confused about that last, but what you're trying to say, but you honestly lost me somewhere. There. It's fine. I lost myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think it's you know, I I think it's like, I mean, and within that, there's like several dynamics wrapped up. You know that like we have to, as individual Christians and as a corporate church, you know, think about how you relate to individual non-believers and larger groups of non-believers, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I, I think, like you kind of alluded to, we have to be careful not to lump everybody together, you know, not to say that, like, well, because, um, because you know, a certain number of people or a certain group of people did this bad thing, everyone should feel bad, yeah. or to say that because a certain number of people or a certain group of people felt hurt, you should feel just as hurt. Yeah. Which is, would be dumb. Because in real, reality, like, Jews suck, Christians suck, Muslims suck, white people suck, black people suck, Asians suck. Like, we all suck, right? Like, but it, it wasn't until, like, I specifically, like, pointed out all of those groups that somebody is going to go, whoa, 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 Sam, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, did he really just say that? And it's like, yeah, I, I did. I could continue and go on and move on and like specifically like point out like forty year olds suck, you know, like teenagers suck, like infants. <laughs> well, infants are infants. You have to clean up after them and whatever. But you know about this. You have a child, um, but uh, little kids suck sometimes. Like I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I feel. I know for certain that when you start to put these kind of like labels on people is that it does, it, it puts a veil over people's faces and it really just, it, it disconnects you from what could actually come from that. Um, can breed disunity, but. Like, what do you believe in it whenever it comes to like, do you believe diversity is good? Um, explain, like. Like, unpack that a little bit more. Diversity in your marriage? No. Okay. Diversity in a... Um... Wait, wait a second. Do you mean, like, it's... This is so loaded, man. 
I like I like being married to one person. Okay. So, so I'm going to exclude everyone else from my marriage. And that's what you mean by like you don't like diversity in your marriage is that you you find you find peace in in the unity of your marriage, right? You don't find peace yeah. in the diversity of your in in your marriage. Well, there isn't diversity. It's one person. Is it First Corinthians? Did you just turn off? Did you just die? <laughs> Are you alluding to that we're all members of one body and we're married to married to Christ? Is that where you're going with that? I'm alluding to the fact that this memory card is full. Why is it full? I don't know why the memory card's full, man. I don't either. Um... No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm bringing up this, this idea of diversity. Um, hope this has memory in it. Yeah, it was a loaded question, sorry. I didn't mean to, and now you're just sitting on camera, like. <laughs> just awkwardly here, yeah, just, just hanging just out. Yeah, just shot of you just, hanging sitting, out, just, just sitting like, there. Just... Like, I just, I just admitted to being in opposition to diversity when it comes to marriage, right? When it comes to focus. my marriage, that I like being married to one person. Yeah, so like, I would, I would pose the question like, do you believe a nation should be diverse or is, should it, should, is a nation of diversity or a nation of unity? I mean, those two aren't mutually exclusive. Should you celebrate diversity or should you celebrate unity? Both. In what, what aspects? So, I think as a, speaking as a church, um, that... I'll just tell you what I think, is that I think that you should really, you should... I, I, don't, I don't understand celebrating diversity. I understand celebrating unity. You know... Okay, well, so let me give you an example Talk to me. Of, of celebrating diversity. Yes, right? go for it. So, I form a band, uh-huh. right? Um, and that band is not Leonard Skinner. Praise okay. the Lord. So we have more, so we have multiple people with diverse instruments, right? Somebody plays the drums, somebody plays the bass. Wait, can you, can you, t- can you just tell me if I'm in focus over there? Just, just yeah, hop over there sure. and like... You have to unflip the screen or whatever? Yeah. Like this? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, you're in focus. You're good. Okay. And then just go ahead and close it. Great. Cool. So, I have a diverse band. Yes. Right? Because it's not Leonard Skinner. Not everyone plays guitar. Sure. And so, there's a keyboardist. There's a drummer. There's a bassist. There is a uh, uh, singer who needs that. Um, you know, and there's a couple lead guitarists. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. So there's diversity within the band. Yeah. And we can celebrate that. Yeah, harmoniously. But we also need unity in the band. Sure. Everybody needs to be playing the same stuff, mm-hmm. or else if somebody decides to play a different song in the middle of the song, we're kind of off the rails. You know? Yeah. We're so like one... New Orleans jazz. One kind of do that. separates you, and then the one kind of like pulls you together. Well, it doesn't. The diversity pulls us together, too. How so? Because if we were all playing guitar, we couldn't get along. We like would each have to have a part, and everyone would want the lead part. But because somebody's a drummer, they can play drums and they can do all the fills they want, and yeah. it won't mess with the guitarist, who's the lead guitarist, who can do all the fun licks, all the solos that he wants. Mm-hmm. And that won't mess with the bassist, who can play all the slap he wants. So you can't have one without the other? Actually, yes. I, I don't think you can have one without the other. So unity and diversity coincide within each other. Which I think, I think is why Paul says we're part of one body with many members. Yeah. Not everyone's an eye. Not everyone's a tooth. Not everyone's a toe. 
but we need the toe, and we need the eye, and we need the tooth. Yeah. Dude, we're only about an hour and 30 minutes in. <laughs> you got something. Say it. Say it. Go ahead. Just just say it. What's, what's on your mind? Dude, well, we've been talking about what's on my mind because we just got here. We yeah, I know, to, right? I just, I we know. just got to talking about unity and diversity out of the mini one. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, so I think that's true. Um, I, I, I think that's true. By the way, the Crusades were somewhat justified. Why do you say that? I don't know Just enough about it. To, no, 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 no. Oh. I, I, I don't know enough to talk about it, but I do know... I know that there's another side to that argument. So, not to be controversial, but for both of us to, like, go back and kind of, like, look into it. And, um, That's interesting, but... I think from my perspective, it, it's more about loving those people well. You yeah. Know, the aftermath, you're kind of cleaning it up with Christ's love and with... Uh, and with Christ's servant, servant-like heart, yeah. Rather than you know, looking back and saying who's right and who's not. Yeah, I had a devotional one morning that was talking about how there was this pastor, that mega church pastor, that hated Japan for some reason, and he would never put a church in Japan or something. And then he ended up putting a church in Japan, and then he went to Japan, and then all he could say to this whole entire crowd of like pastors in this in Japan was like I hate you I hate you I hate you and then like he went off the stage and then like every single one of the pastors came up to this guy and um, apologized for whatever Japan did to him which is like you may be nodding your head but I think that's just absolutely ridiculous how can you apologize for a, a state like Part of that's also our Western mindset that we have an individ- that we've grown up that we're like it's built into us to have an individualistic mindset, whereas the majority of the world has a collectivistic mindset. Do you know what that like collectivism is versus versus individualism? No, so but I think it's similar to like. It's like general, hate generally. Hate the sin, not the sinner. Um, not not exactly. So like individualism we're familiar with it's like I did this I accomplished this I want myself to succeed yes right um in a lot of places in the world like my individual success is not really important it's just it's either like I want my extended family or my tribe or my nation or my socio-religious group to succeed I want us to be able to accomplish something. So if someone owns something, it's not really theirs, it belongs to the group. Yeah. If someone accomplishes something, it's not really that they've accomplished it, but we as a group have come together and accomplished it. Yeah, sure. Saying we right. instead of I whenever you've got a group of people. There. Essentially. Well, and that's just the way that, that most of the world thinks. Yeah. You know, and, and so for them, it's not like you hurt Joe. It's like, well, you hurt the community. Hmm. Just thoughts. It's not that way in the U.S. though. We don't have a collectivistic culture here. Yeah, this is different. Well, we're trying to form one. I mean, like my pastor told me the other day, like say we, like it's we, not you, not like I, but we. So, all right. We're, we're... And again, we need, you know, the diversity brings out the 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 body of Christ. So I guess I can't. I can. I I I can. I love these conversations because, like, it really shapes, like, my, shapes who, the, my thoughts, really. You know, mm-hmm. like, these aren't conversations that are to be, that are had every single day. So, like, I went from, you can't celebrate, you can celebrate unity, but you can't celebrate diversity to, I don't think that either one of those should really even be celebrated. I think that that's something that is nuanced. Do you believe in nuance? Do you think that there are things that shouldn't have, um shouldn't play a role in how you think or what you do? Hmm. Um, 
So like the idea that 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 your shirt is green and the chair is green and that has no um, that has no effect on the trajectory of conversation. Probably. Except um, for that you just mentioned it. There's sure. Effect to that. Consciously. Opposed to like you being um, married and uh, curly hair um, plays a role on the conversation and the trajectory um, unconsciously. Do you see where I'm going with this, or am I just talking outside? Like, yeah, no, I think it's valid to say that there are things that just like, you know, that, that we encounter that have virtually no, you know, no impact on what, on what happens. Like, that are like. Did, did you know that seventy like, percent? I think there's a statistic that I heard in something that like seventy percent, maybe it's thirty percent. I'm just gonna say ten percent for the sake of your feelings. Take curly people with curly hair less serious that doesn't surprise me a bit yeah yeah but that's 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 real like (laughs) i think it's kind of silly but like i can see how people would 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 that i can't really see i mean i can i can kind of understand just because um well now i'm just trying to justify the fact that I, I, i don't want to be lumped in with that group of people that (laughs) <laughs> minds people with curly hair I, 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 think, I don't so I, I think I think the reason for things like that is because as people we we recognize order and we recognize pattern very easily sure you know and it's even like uh, the weird psychological experiment where they showed babies the rotating mask and they like recognize the back of it as a I've face never, too I've never heard of that oh, what is like, it it's a famous like psychology thing so what is it but, well so there's like a mask yeah. like, like an actor's mask and it spins in a circle, right? Um, and so they monitored what babies kind of do when they recognize faces, and like human faces. Mm-hmm. And and basically, what 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 it showed is that even very young babies recognize it as a face, and even recognize the the inverse, the back side of the mask, really as a face. They said, really, it's like oh, it's a face, you know, because the babies it's... act different. And so you were just wired to recognize. Uh, to recognize pattern, to recognize regularity, right? Yeah. So even more so, we recognize something that falls out of the normal pattern, you know, that falls outside of... You weren't being recorded for a little while, but it's cool. Oh, man. We got that one. Uh, you know, so we more readily recognize things that don't quite fit the pattern. Sure. Right? So if I'm walking down the street in America and I see one guy with, like, a fro, I'm like... I recognize it right off the bat. Sure. You know, I didn't recognize the other five guys with regular, like, crew cut kind of hair, but the one guy with a fro, it's like, jumps out to me. Sure. Um, you know, so in that way, the, like, outlier, the one that breaks the pattern, is the one that's going to... Stand out the most. Yeah, that's going to impact the way that I... It's like the time I had think. a mullet and a mustache. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I like to break the pattern. I like to do, I like to do those kind of things. Um, can it? I think it can get unhealthy though. <laughs> that can that can be unhealthy if you take it too far. Yeah, if you're coloring your hair every single other week. I used to have these. Uh, That's. Mm. I used to have these like, I mean it was before like leggings were a thing, but they were like, basically leggings. Yoga and pants. Like, uh, Are you telling me that you used to wear yoga pants? No, no, because they were tight at the bottom. Yoga pants aren't tight at the bottom. These okay, were like you. tight all the way up the leg, and they were like. Uh, this leathery kind of material on the outside, like pleather, and then they had like you totally were a musician. Or and they had musician. these like uh, neon colored zippers, like up where there would be pockets, but there was no pockets because it okay, would be gross if you put anything in them. Yeah, interesting. Do you wear those anymore? I don't. They were really comfortable though. I will say that. So fair enough. I wanted to. I wanted to jump back to that that whole baby image that they how, how they recognize mm-hmm. the face right the patterns so i think it was 2013 14 2012 maybe 2012 2011 i took lsd and i actually drew the face 
but I didn't draw it like this. I drew it from where the tip of your nose is right here, right? Mm -hmm. And then I drew one that was right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, all the way to where it was all the way turned around, to where I was drawing a face, but from the perspective of if you took your eyes and just like pulled them back, okay, just, yeah. as, just as yeah, you were explaining yeah, what, what the baby could recognize through that. Mm -hmm. So it just made me think of that, and it just was um, kind of like Da Vinci, how he had like the right the arms yeah but it was a face and it was but i'd never heard that they did like that test where the baby yeah you could, should look it up i should link in the description <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of links in the description <laughs> um so demonic and angelic what are the what comes to mind whenever i say those two words a lot of cartoons a lot of cartoons <laughs> honestly to start off with, I mean, it's obviously a lot more. Are you like one of those that, like but... against Harry Potter because it's demonic? Like, are you against like magic and like? Um. No, not not in that way. Not like because I I think there are like there are people that over mysticize it. Mm -hmm. You know, that are like walking around and like you know it's like I got a flat tire today. It must be like spiritual. You know. A they're, sign. they're against me. You know, they don't want me to get where I'm going, which could be true sometimes. Oh, like the but, demons are. Like, but they're like to get blame. You know, they blame everything on mm -hmm. like you know on like spirits or uh, angels. And Dude, I have seen now three times on television where they're pumping like tarot card readers or like some psychic with something like three or four. T man, and, and like I don't watch television unless I'm at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. So like to see something and then to, like I immediately go. This has been here on it on. If I'm seeing it right now, chances are that they've put this these people. Do you see that bubble that came off my tongue? I did not see that. You missed out, man. Your eyes followed it. I really missed. Your that. eyes followed it. Like that's weird. I didn't even register it. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, your eyes followed this bubble that. Anyway, they so they like had it on there, and I'm just like, why are they promoting this? Like, <laughs> whether or not the uh, Chiefs. Like, I think that's why the Chiefs didn't make it to the Super Bowl. I'll just say it. It's because. Whatever that channel was, it had uh, a tarot card reader or a psychic on there saying that they are going to make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I'm you know, that would, that would kind of sort of make sense in a way. And I think that's, that's kind of a different class of things. Like, I wouldn't have anything to do with, like, a tarot card reader or yeah. anything like that. Would you, ever, um, would you ever speak to them? Like, have a conversation like this with them? Yeah. Yeah. On a, at okay. least on an intellectual level, I would. I have to clarify those, those things because some people hear what you just said and instead of hearing, like, um, I'd never um, sit down and get a reading or whatever, like, instead of hearing that, they immediately hear that you would never talk to that person. It doesn't make them, you know, any more... And so that's kind of why I, I jump to the thing of, like, be weary of who you apologize to. Because somebody who believes that and hears you say something like that, and they hear the the complete, they hear that how you just said that you wouldn't sit down and do a tarot card reading or whatever, mm -hmm. and then they hear, oh, I'd never speak to one a person like that. Would you apologize to that person, or would you say let's let me just let me just let me explain more to yeah, why I said definitely. that. Definitely, I would probably do the latter. You know, I'd explain why, like, like what I really meant. You know, but what if they were still? What if they were still? They said that they were still hurt by it. Like we should, we should just straight up have like a role playing right here, and see if, <laughs> see if I can get you to apologize oh. to me for for something that I do not actually. Oh, um, I mean that's that's a really tough a really tough question. Honestly, I I probably would. Yeah. Partly because I'm just such a passive person in yeah. general, you know, that I wouldn't... What if I told you that that would actually damage that individual? It would damage them for me to apologize to them? Yes. How would it damage them? Because there are some people in this world that are fueled off of manipulation and, and getting people to... And I, and I see it. I see it quite often is that they get it. Mm. They they will 
force you. I mean, I mean, you not only, not only like day to day, more more so that what I see in the news and the media and everything that's going on is that people are apologizing for. Uh, Kevin Hart apologized for tweeting something about how if he found out his son was gay, then he would go home and um, destroy the dollhouse that he was playing with or something like that. Like eight years ago. And he got attacked for it. And then he pretty much came out and like apologized for saying that when he's a comedian. I don't think his intentions, I don't think his motives, it's not even that I think. I know for a fact that his motives weren't to um, disrespect gay people. Especially how close he is with Ellen DeGeneres. Like, you can't... And so, so, so when, when, I, when I hear you, like, it's just... You get what I'm saying? Like, there, there are some people, like... There's this pitchfork mob out there that goes around and... and I don't know. I'm talking... I'm going too deep into politics here. <laughs> this is why it's my testimony, not your testimony. <laughs> I mean, it's your testimony, not my testimony. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, my it's a cons- it's it's a big concern of mine, and that's why I, I think about it so often, and I shouldn't. And so. Another another thing that's difficult to consider when we hear things like that is that like there there's an extent to which there's like when you're when you are in our culture representing a larger group, you know, when you're a uh, like a public figure, you know that that. It's like a speaker, you know, or like the pastor of a church or a politician, you know, who, who represents something beyond yourself. Sure. You know, um, because maybe, you know, that's not just uh, Kevin Hart acting as Kevin Hart, but that's Kevin Hart acting as, you know, acting as the public speaker, Kevin Hart, and acting as the television network that he's worked for, you know, acting as... Um, you know, on behalf of kind of the larger, maybe Kevin Hart's a bad, a bad example for that, but you know, the similar things where it's like this person is is like doing something because they're a public figure that like I as an individual maybe wouldn't be held to the same kind of standard. Yeah, so like I'm sure that his the agent that he has is going to feel impact from from that. Yeah. Like, no doubt about it. I mean, um, I guess to jump to the conclusion that I just know his all of his motives is silly, but um, I'm sure to, to some degree that the apology came out because of... because his agency asked him to do that. Probably. I'm, I mean, I don't know Kevin Hart. I don't know his agency. So... It's probably a factor. So I, I guess what, what we're kind of doing is like trying to identify the uh, whose heart is whose heart is uh, oh, is I really get it. broken. Heart. I whose did heart not is broken. I totally didn't mean whatever. You were trying to make a dad joke. Yeah. But really, whose heart is corrupt in this 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 equation? Is it all these people that are telling him that we want an apology? <laughs> Or is it the heart of Kevin Hart <laughs> that is trying to be funny and says st- some stupid joke on Twitter like eight years ago? I would, I would, I would see the heart of those who are asking for an apology because if you follow the story, is that when he did come out and apologize, come out, I said, <laughs> sorry, I just wanted to, but after he did. Um, apologize um that wasn't actually enough there were several articles that were written that it was just not enough that he should have he should have done all these other things but i digress i correlate maybe too much of what i see on television and media to our nation as a whole Mm -hmm. which is not necessarily true yeah, you know. I mean, walk walk to your walk to your over. walk to your the nearest supermarket. You know, don't walk, drive there, or ride a bike. Like just to say, uh, I was gonna make another point, but I just made a point right there. Is that just to say that you can walk, drive, or walk to your nearest supermarket is is a blessing. It wasn't always that way. Yeah. You know, 
this used to be the wild, wild west here in good old Kansas City, Missouri. Like, yeah, that's true. So, uh, I think I said too much. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Yeah. Do you uh, do you listen to any podcasts? No, I really don't. Yeah. I really don't. Where do you get your news? Um, I actually, well, not to promote something else on your uh, link in the description, uh, but I I recently got something called the new paper, um, which basically like summarizes the day's news stories into like a sentence or so, and then lists them off in like bullet points. Ah. So you get like it just comes as an email every day, and then there's like six or eight bullet points of yeah. like these are the major things that happened today I mean that's it sounds it sounds like you just described how everybody gets their news well I mean that that is kind of true that that's kind of you know we get the bullet points of the news but it but no they're just the headline I mean people just they just, just like look at the headline yeah they just read the on. headline and they go okay. yeah this is a thing that you can literally subscribe to and it'll just get give you what you're can you like go into anyway. depth and like see more about it yeah there, there's links in each one so if it's something that you're actually interested in or actually care about that'd be really click cool on it and read if the article. when you click on it then it would have like a spectrum and then it would have links to several different articles that are across the board of of left to right like news well, organizations. So, so that's another cool thing at this particular place is is that the majority of the places they link to aren't like partisan news organizations. So like one was was about some. Be bit, careful where you tread at this no, no, point. No, no. Tell well, me, tell no, me. So, I, I, so, so one of them <laughs> was like about you know, such and such a bill was passed today. Right? Yeah, and it, it was a like the link took you to the actual bill. Yeah, like it wasn't uh, a news story about the bill. Uh, it took you like to that. the actual thing. Yeah, no, I like that. So. I definitely like that. There, there's, there's a lot of time. I, I almost wanted to make a podcast, not even joking you, where I just took a bill and I would just read it. Yeah. And it would just be that, like, controversial, like, bills that people just don't, like, things that um, people don't quite understand or acts or, or yeah. any kind of, like, um, and, and, like, just read it just so people can hear it. Because there's... I'm starting to see that a lot more people listen than read. Okay, that's totally anecdotal. I listen to more than I read. But you also see the numbers and ratings going up and up on, on the popularity of podcasts. So. Well, that's true. Most podcasts are not, uh, are not reading. Yeah. So hearing something read is different than hearing something, hearing conversational speaking. Yeah. So it's important, an important difference there. To note. Do you like history? Um, some parts of it. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, if you're if you if you if you have this belief this in predestination, then um, do you believe that disaster? was meant to happen then? So I I don't believe in deism. Deism is different than predestination. So deism is So all the bad stuff was de- Well, deism is the belief that like God just kind of set everything up the way it should be and then kind of like set the earth, you know, set history on its course. You know, just like planned everything out and said, "Okay, this is the way everything's going to happen." Yeah. That's like, deism. That's detail. And then it was just not involved in it at all. Okay. But you feel like he's involved. Oh, definitely. Okay, I gotta go to the bathroom really quick. Can you, are you good on time? Like, Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm gonna go around and use the restroom. If you could just tell the story of how you met your wife. Oh, dude, how I met my wife. So, actually. And, and, and do, it, do it in a way that you're telling, so you have a daughter, don't you? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, tell you. This is going to be, this, this is for your daughter. Oh, nice. This is going to be for my daughter. So this yeah. is going to be for Isabel. Yeah. So Isabel, this is how I met your mother. Um, which also, oh. don't Google that. It's the name of a sitcom from when I was a kid. So you probably don't want to watch the sitcom, How I Met Your no, Mother. No, no, no. That is but, the best series ever. But, but, so you're 18, right? 
But how I met your mother was um, was actually through a campus ministry where we both went to college in a little tiny town in northern Missouri. So we were going to school there. We were working in ministry together. Um, and I found out that she played percussion. She played drums and stuff. And at the time, I was, uh, I was really into making these drums called cajones. And in case you haven't seen one by now, it's a little rectangular thing that you sit on top of and hit the front. And so one day, kind of out of the blue, she texts me and asks, like, a couple questions about it. Like, about, you know, like, how much would it cost if you made one? Um... And so I, I let her know, um, and a little bit after she'd probably want to drop the conversation, I kept the conversation going, and I kept on with, like, uh, texting her about details of it, what kind of design she'd want on it. Um, I, you know, I asked her some other, some other things. Uh, I told her a couple really, really, really bad, cheesy jokes, and uh, some things like that just to kind of keep that conversation going. And then in our leadership meetings with this campus ministry, since we were both on leadership, I started sitting next to her. She would come in late, usually because she was coming from her, from her work to the, to the meetings, and I'd save a spot beside me, and she would come and sit next to me, and whenever I could, I'd comment on something. I would comment on, like, uh, her writing style when she was taking notes, or I would comment on, like... Uh, you know, ideas that she'd share during the meeting or things like that. And so one day she brought up her, what she called, theory of, uh, theory of spiritual entropy. That was it. And so she brings this up and it kind of gets ignored. It's kind of like if you ever mention something in a group of people, and, and then it just, like, nobody picks up on it. No one really acknowledges the fact that you said something, and the conversation just moves on past it. And so I kind of leaned over to her, and I'm like, Junia, I'd really love to hear more about this theory of spiritual entropy. And I kind of let it go. And then later I text her, and I'm like, hey, so when are we going to meet up and talk some more about this theory of spiritual entropy? And so we set a time, and we sat down together, and we ended up talking for a long time, like an hour and a half or two hours. We shared about our lives, our plans, our talents, our ideas, um, what we hope to do after we graduate from college, and all this stuff. And basically, she intended it as a giant, uh, as a giant kind of, put off. You know, she intended it as friend zoning me, but I'm so clueless that I did not pick up whatsoever on the fact that she was trying to friend zone me. And so this whole time I'm like, hey, this is going great. We're, we had a long conversation. Um, and so at the end of it, um, you know, she's explaining like the reasons why she doesn't think it'll work out, um, why she thinks, you know, this is a bad idea. And I'm like, yeah, well, it would be great to, to get together again and, and talk some more about this stuff. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed our time together. Um, let's, let's get together sometime again, maybe over dinner or something, and just talk some more. And she says, like a date? And I said, yeah, like a date. And then I just kind of walked off. I just kind of left at that point. Um, and, you know, I'm sure she was very stunned, very agape at that point, but... Uh, but I thought it was a, I thought it was a solid, solid score. Uh, in retrospect, probably just saying that and walking away was not the most uh, elegant. Yeah, it was not the most <laughs> elegant decision. So, if you ever have a conversation like that, which hopefully, or if a boy ever has a conversation with you like that. Be sure to let him know that he needs to stick around if he drops something like that on you. But that's that's how I got out of the friend zone. And how we Yes, that's how I got out of the friend zone. I love this. <laughs> I'm so happy for you to get out of the friend zone. I'm trying to think of the times that I was I was never really friend zoned. I have friend zoned some people. Let's see. 
There's one girl that I friend zoned, and I did it in the worst way possible. I was like, and it wasn't even like friend zoning. It was like, I'm not this trying to be this guy.